What lurks within the dark past of Vermont? Does the past leave behind residual or intelligent spirits? Or can there be things more than what we can see or feel? My name is Paul Dosky, and you are listening to Haunted Vermont. According to a UVM article that was published in 1941 by Claire Gardner, who asked herself the same question, she recorded the story as her father had told it many years before. And for those that are wondering, I am talking about the mysterious road that is only named after a ghost. But whose ghost? And this is located in West Haven, Vermont. It's not far from Fairhaven. And it's about 45 minutes from Rutland. Now, have you ever wondered what could possibly be the reason behind it? But the story might help just a little bit of how Ghost Hollow Road came to be. Because before the railroads came to Vermont, Lake Champlain was a major transportation link between Canada and New York City. Here and there, along the shore, a number of settlements sprang up that were populated by boaters. Such a community, made up of about half a dozen log cabins, was situated a couple miles inland at West Haven. To get there from the wharf, one had to travel along a narrow, rutted road. It passed a cliff where timber rattlers basked on sunny days then entered a wooded hollow, where day or night, it was always dark. On one cold March night, more than two centuries ago, a young man hurried along this inhospitable path. An hospital path. An hospital path. His boat had been delayed, and he was late for an important occasion. Nearly frantic, he rushed towards home to be at the side of his young wife, who was about to give birth. Though it would be the couple's first child, it was in many ways a dreaded event. In those days, home births could be frightening ordeals, generally attended only by the inexperienced family members or an ill-prepared midwives. The young man traveled as quickly as he could in the utter darkness. Suddenly, just when he was feeling uncertain about his direction, the thick clouds parted overhead. In a moment of radiant moonlight, the young man was surprised to see someone coming towards him from the direction of the cabins. The figure, dressed in a flowing white garment, that appeared almost luminous in the moonlight, seemed to be running. Yet she ran oddly. Her arms and legs seemed not to be moving. Within a few seconds, the young man recognized the approaching figure. It was, in fact, his wife. As always, she was coming to meet him. But wait, as he started to wave, a half-formed smile froze on his face. He realized she should not be out and about. She should be home in bed. He watched the radiant figure stop near a little brook. It was as if she couldn't cross the water. Then, just before the sky went dark again, she vanished. The young man's momentary joy turned to terror. Like all country people, he knew about signs and portents. Surely this had been a vision. He knew he was forewarned about something. Filled with the foreboding, he raced through the darkness to his cabin. 
When he arrived home, he was greeted by a familiar tragedy of frontier life. His young wife had died in childbirth. The young man quickly discovered that she had passed away at roughly the same moment he had stepped into the hollow where he had his last look at her. Ever since then, the place has been known as Ghost Hollow Road, and that is how it appears on maps, GPSs, and other things to this day. Another fascinating thing about Ghost Hollow Road are the signs. One is an actual street sign that pretty much is usually taken, and I'm assuming it's because of the name itself, Ghost Hollow. It's kind of like those weird names like High Street. You know, High Street, um, Elm Street maybe, and maybe Crystal Lake Road or something. Just because of those type of people that like those type of names and want it for their own treasures, I guess. But there's a, also another type of sign for Ghost Hollow Road. But this one would take not just by hand. It would have to be by a machine. Because the second sign, which I'm assuming was made because of these type of looters that go after the street sign for specific names, is on a boulder. Which spells out just Ghost Hollow on a boulder rock. That sits on the side of the road of Ghost Hollow within the grass and on top of the farmland. However, though, if you're not really paying attention and if it's the early summer, the boulder can sometimes be covered up by the long grass. But if you look carefully to the right as you approach it, depending on which way you're coming from, of course, but if you look to your right as you're taking the left turn onto Ghost Hollow, it will be right there, maybe beyond the tall grass. And I find it to be very interesting. And once again, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support, head over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Haunted Vermont where you can pledge a dollar a month or more and receive rewards every month. You'll hear the episode first before the public. Pledge in more grants you access to the show where you can share your own stories and experiences on future episodes. I already fund another podcast 100%, so I'm asking help for this one at least. Season 1 will have a total of 6 episodes, and then it will depend on funds after that. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed, please rate our podcast on any platform that you are listening to. We'd like to know how we're doing, because if you hate it, we'd like to know why. And if you love it, please make sure that you share the podcast around. And once again, thank you for listening.